Mr. President. Thank you. Senator from Washington. Mr. President, we are here today to talk about our democracy. And here's what I know about how a democracy actually works. I come out here to the Senate floor every day, just like every other member of this chamber, and I fight for what I believe in. And I use my voice to do that, and I use my vote to do that. That same is true for every citizen of this country. They use their vote to say what they want for the future of our democracy to look like. But right now, states across the country are taking away that right. They're taking away their voice. We have to make sure that every vote is never taken away, that no voice is taken away, or we're going to lose the democracy in the future. And here's what's happening right now. Republican-led legislatures are making it hard to vote for certain groups of people, primarily black Americans, Native Americans, young people, and people with disabilities, just because they might vote for a Democrat. This is a national coordinated effort to keep Republicans in power at every level of government by keeping Americans away from the ballot box by keeping Americans from being able to use their voice and their vote. Specifically, Republican-led legislatures are passing legislation to make it harder for people to vote by mail, drastically eliminating the av availability of secure drop boxes so people can safely drop off their ballot, and reducing early voting hours or days. And it's all done to demoralize and discourage people working people from making their voices heard and to make the democratic process so much more cumbersome. That's a mom who's juggling childcare and schooling during this pandemic who's going to look for options to get that ballot in, to get her voice in, to get her vote in. And she won't be able to find a way to do that with all of her responsibilities. Maybe there's not a drop box near her. Or maybe early voting hours have been cut short. Or maybe the new rules about voting by mail are just too complicated. Because of those barriers that are being erected in Republican legislatures, that mom will not get to advocate for her kids or her com community with her vote. And too many Republicans want it to work exactly like that. And those far-right politicians also want to pick their own voters, literally drawing lines between communities to reinforce partisan divides. Congressional Democrats are working to do the opposite. Instead of letting politicians draw maps to rig the outcomes in favor of one party or another, we just want to end partisan gerrymandering. Because let's be clear, people should pick their representatives in the United States of America, not the other way around. And what we're seeing happening across the country is undemocratic and in no uncertain terms. It is a threat to this democracy. And if you don't believe me, look at what the former president said just this past weekend. Donald Trump, the leader of the Republican Party, continues, as we know, to spread the lie that 2020 election was stolen from him. He is working hard out in the open to convince every American that he that he can, that our free, fair election in 2020 was illegitimate. But even more concerning is the former president's explicit, stated determination to rig the outcomes of future elections. In a recent recorded message, Donald Trump said, and I quote, we have to be a lot sharper the next time when it comes to counting the vote. Sometimes the vote counter is more important than the candidate more important than the candidate. And what Donald Trump means in this case <laughs> was clear. He wants his loyalists to oversee our elections to make sure the outcome is always in his favor. I mean, just sit with that. We're not talking about hypotheticals here. The leader of the Republican Party wants to toss democracy out the window and change the outcome of any election results he doesn't like. Mr. President, history is sitting on our shoulders right now. The American people are looking to us for a way to move forward and protect the right to vote. And this is it. 
and all that's standing in our way is Senate procedure. Senate procedure that a majority of us voted last month to change. Now, I understand the reluctance around reforming the filibuster. I do. I understand we want this institution to work, to be bipartisan when it comes to tackling big challenges. But here's the deal. I don't think that carving out a path to pass voting rights on a simple majority precludes that. In fact, I think it's past time that we reform the filibuster to make sure the world's greatest deliberative body actually deliberates the issues and challenges that are facing the American people. But today, Senate procedure keeps us from that kind of deliberation. Senate rules, not unlike the partisan gerrymandering we're seeing in states across the country, push Democrats and Republicans further into their corners rather than towards collaboration, making it unbelievably easy to block legislative action and nearly impossible to start it. And that means Americans do not get to see where elected officials stand on issues as consequential as protecting the right to vote. To even have the debate we're having right now, we had to dig through Senate rules and quite literally repurpose a bill that allows NASA to lease this property. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be standing here on the floor today to have this discussion about voting rights. That does not make sense. It should not be so difficult to make it so the public can see where each of us stands. And let's remember, these voter suppression laws are all being passed mainly on a partisan basis with simple majorities. Now, some have suggested that if we believe these laws are unconstitutional, we should fight them in the courts, take our arguments all the way to the Supreme Court. But remember, there are three Supreme Court justices, all appointed by a simple majority of this Senate without the filibuster. So let's recap. Republicans want to appoint judges without a filibuster standing in their way. They want Republican state lawmakers to be able to pass voter suppression laws without a filibuster. But Democrats can't protect the basic right to vote on a simple majority. That's what we're talking about here today. Making Election Day a federal holiday, making sure everyone can vote by mail, ending gerrymandering so voters can pick their politicians and not the other way around. These are simple, straightforward reforms with tremendous significance for our country's future as a democracy. And the path to getting them done, done is simple and straightforward too. What each of us has to do is decide that our democracy comes before Senate procedure and then cast our votes. I've made my decision and here's what I believe. We cannot let the filibuster stop us from protecting every American's right to vote. If it's the filibuster or democracy, I'll choose democracy. If it's the Senate rules or a Senate that works for the American people, I'll choose a Senate that works. And I urge my colleagues with all of my heart and for the sake of this democracy to do the same. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.